Hi, this is a <coughs> video um, tutorial on how to use the uh, Pebble data server to automatically upload your data from a Pebble task. Um, there's a companion blog post that has more details and some of the files, and the files that I use here are available in a download link or on the blog that's associated with this. So the basic idea of this um, tutorial is to show you how to use um, some a server software um, that I call the Pebble, the Pebble Data Server that lets you upload data from a Pebble task to a server and then lets you um, uh, download that later. So there's a couple of use cases for this. One would be you have a lab with a bunch of computers and you want them each to upload the data to your server when they're done, maybe they're all in the same location or maybe they're in different locations. Um, you might have a study you're conducting over many different sites and you don't want to um, have to manage all the data collection through copying files around. Or you could um, be having participants run a Pebble instance on their own computer and then you want to use this to get the data back um, instead of having them sort of search out their data files and send them to you. So um, <clears throat> the center of this is software called the Pebble Data Server. I've got a version of this running on my website, obereed.net slash PDS, and you can get there through that. Um, this is also available for you to run on your own server, although you need to um, understand servers and PHP and databases in order to be able to do that. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to make this available to, to people who ask for it, or um, and in the future I may um, restrict this to donors or have some type of service where I'll host the data um, server for you. Uh, but for the moment, you can test it out, try it out. Um, so you can go here and you need to log in. If you don't have an account, you register a new account, and there's um, really the this is just going into a database and I'm not using the information for anything, but um, you create a username, user email, and you need two passwords. One is the password that lets you log into the data server. And a second one is just for uploading information. So this is what goes into um, a data file on the computer you're uploading from in clear text. So it shouldn't be something that's like your secret password. Um, it doesn't give you access to the data. It just gives you the ability to upload. Um, so it's called an upload password. So um, you can create one of these right now, um, and you, um, but you can't. And you can if you then create it and log in. I'll go to the login and use this account called Matterin. And it'll default to this browse menu where, where it shows you the data that you have uploaded. And these are different data files <coughs> or experiments I've uploaded. So here is, um, call it, it's called dummy. And you can browse the different versions of the data file that you've uploaded and actually download the CSV file directly. Um, or you can download a zip file that um, puts these all together. Um, so here's another experiment. I can download the whole zip file if I save. Um, I can then open it. Okay, so that's the basic operation of the server. Um, and if if you have an account, um, you can browse, but you're not going to have any data uploaded, and um, you actually can't upload data until I approve it. So, um, or the administrator approves it. Here, I've approved this account, so it has administrative approval. If this is a zero, um, if it's set to zero, then you can't actually upload any data. Um, and there's, um, this is going to be shown in another tutorial, but there's, uh, it keeps track of subject codes, so you can actually pull down a new subject code from the server and make sure you have unique subject code every time you run this. Here you can change either your passwords as well. Okay, so let's assume that you're made an account, you've 
contacted me, asked for approval for this, for testing or whatever, I'd given it to you. So the next thing to do is try to get a example, um, a, a sort of a test script running that will upload data. So um, I've made available these files or most of these files for download. And <clears throat> the one we're going to um, look at right now is called test upload. And test upload is just a script that creates a little pebble task, generates fake data in a CSV file, and then uploads it based on your settings. The settings it uses are in this JSON file, um, upload.json. And I'm going to show you a, a different one what to show you what it looks like. So um, this is what it looks like. Um, it has these different arguments. So if you want to set this up at your own location, you can um, create your own host and page and port and username and password and things like that. And this is going to upload it into a file, into a task called dummy, like we saw before. Um, so now, if I, I've saved this in the Pebble folder. So I can run it from um, the Pebble launcher. So here under Pebble uploader, I've saved it here and I should be able to run it under test upload. So when I run this, it creates this window it tells me the server the username and the subject code and it gives me this this is sort of information that the web server is returning if you read it carefully it says file is a-ok -okay. so it's actually uploaded and it was subject 1015 we can return to the data server now and if i go home i can look at the dummy experiment I can see that this is the file I just uploaded. I can look at it here and I could open it in Excel and this is the data I just created. But it's on the server, not not on my local computer. All right. If I I could uh, if I go back here, I'll run this again. And if I uh, reload the page, it now appears there. So um, this is designed so whenever the files run, it uploads this new data file. And if I've completed this and I want to analyze data, I can go here and download the whole zip file, like so. Hopefully this works and I get you know, a folder for each of my subjects with the data. Okay, so um, that is sort of the, the second step to confirm that you have the um, software set up right. Um, let's see. So the next thing you want to do is um, figure out how to put this into a test you want to run. And so I'm going to do this, um, like in the other tutorials, through a um, through the uh, clock test task. So if we go to battery clock test. I'm going to try to open this folder here. I have. Um, Let's see, saved a, I put my upload JSON file here and and it looks just like the other one. So that's one thing you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to move the JSON file to that folder. But then we're going to look at the actual code. And there's a number of steps we need to take in order to make, allow this to run. Um, the first is that um, 
we need to copy a couple functions into this file. Um, these are functions that aren't in Pebble 2.1, the downloadable, installable version. They're actually in the 2.1.3 standalone version if you're using that one. But if you're not using that one, you have to copy these functions in. They, these functions are available within um, this Pebble uploader under upload functions. So we can look at that. And for, where did it go? And there are four functions that make it really easy. So there's um, really, there's two of them related to um, downloading a new subject code. So we won't be using that in this one, in this uh, tutorial. So we're just gonna use the other two. You need to, to um, copy this upload file and this sync data file functions into the, you know, in this case, the clock test folder. So I've done that already. I've, I've copied this, these in here. These um, functions are also in the blog post. Okay, so that's the first step. Um, the next thing we need to do is, um, let's see, we need to identify what the files that are saved are. So the way this is going to work is that this test file is going to create um, data files. And then when it's completed, it will, we'll, we're going to identify the names of those data files and upload it to the server. So you're going to search through here to find the name of the data files. Uh, or the it's actually a variable that we use to create a file that the data gets saved to. Here, um, usually these are within a function called start. And this one, almost everything is in start. This is the thing that gets run when Pebble starts a task. And usually near the beginning, there's going to be a line that called get new data file or file open or file open append that creates a new file, often with the name of the task and a subject code in it. And in this um, task, it's called file out. Let's see, see it right here. It's on line 87. In um, many tasks, it's called g file out. And you just need to remember for this, the name of this uh, file. It's using this function get new data file, and most of the tests within the test battery use this to create a new data file. Um, the, the next thing, uh, this also creates a another um, file that's saved that creates a summary of information at the end. And we can see it down here, it's called report. It's made with file open append and it's um, based on the subject code and the clock report name and things like that. But it's called report. If we were to look um, within, let's see, if we were to look within the pedal battery clock test file, the data are always gonna appear in a data subfolder associated with different subject codes. And here are the two files. This is an individual data file. And this is that report text, which includes text that appears at the end of this. So if we wanna look at, if we wanna just test, well, we'll test this in a moment. Okay. So we've identified the two data files we wanna save. Some files have multiple, more than two data files. Others have just one. You don't have to upload all them all. You just have to upload the ones you care about. Um, some of them will create a merge data file for your whole experiment, and you probably don't need to upload that because you can always do the merge yourself. But we need to then identify a location within the script that we want to do the upload. So if you follow this along, this is the end of each trial. And then um, we. We, this is sort of the report that gets created. The report gets saved to a file here. And then um, these are new lines I've added, but then it gets printed. Um, 
the report gets uh, printed out to the file, and then that file gets closed, so it's saved to the disk. So right after that um, is the end of the whole experiment, and it's it waits for you to hit X because sort of this message in the middle says hit X to exit the, the experiment. So this is a good point to upload the data. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to do it after this because um, oftentimes a person might not know what to do. They'll close the file if it's waiting for a key press. And so you so do it sort of right before, and then um, it will automatically upload right at the end. So <clears throat> what you need to do is load a line like this, and it's with this function I just added. And you need upload file. The first thing you have to tell it is the subject code, because that's how it saves it within its database. In this case, we have, um, and I think all of the Pebble tasks, subject code is saved in a variable called g sub num. I have to specify the file name that I want to upload and what the settings file is. The settings file is this upload.json file. I have specified that in a variable up here, but I could easily let's see. Um, Right up here at the line for, in line 47, I put it here, but I not, actually I don't even need to do that. I can put it right when I, in the function call that does the upload. And in fact, you know, I could use a different uh, I could re I could save my credentials under a different JSON file and call that different JSON file here. I assign this to out um, because this returns text from the web server in case there is an error, and you can print that out to see if it's succeeding or failing and look at the log files. Um, but that's not really necessary. So. I'm going to do that for both the files. Now, the fname1 and fname2 are the names of the files, and I extract them into variables here. So, if this is the file out was the file object, the thing that gets um, holds the file and things get printed to, and if you do file out dot file name, that will give you the name of the file. Similarly, I created report here. Report dot file name gives me the name of the text file which is whatever this was created as. So I say I want subject, th this subject, this file name, and then whatever's in this, um, whatever is specified in this upload file, which this upload file specifies the task name. Um, if we return back to here, it will put it in task name dummy. So, so maybe we want to change this um, maybe you'd want to change that to clock test. All right, so let's see. I'm going to, instead of using the default parameter set, I have a new, another set that um, is abbreviated. So let's run this. Hopefully this will work. So here I'm supposed to hit the space bar anytime the red dot jumps to. There we go. There's another one. There's another one. We have a false alarm or two there. So this is the report file that gets um, saved at the end. Um, it says there were 20 trials, seven targets or skips. I hit I had 19 correct responses, six correct targets, zero false alarms. Okay. Hit X to exit. All right. So. Now, this was completely seamless. I didn't see anything happen. Um, but if we return to this website, you should see uh, now we have this clock test. Um, 
I had put clock test in that upload.json file as the test name. I can go here and both of those data files have been uploaded now. I can look at um, this and this is exactly the same report that appeared at the very end of the test to the participant. Seven skips, 20 trials, 19 responses, zero false alarms. Okay, so um, now what I need to do to deploy this is just make sure um, this new clock test level file is used on whatever computer I want and make sure this JSON file is in that same folder. Um, you know, this has to have the right username and upload password and task name. And of course you could use task name to, if you have say two labs running this in two different locations, you could use different task names so you can keep those separated. Um, and that's, that's really all. Um, the only thing to um, sort of think about is how you um, how you actually specify the participant codes. Now, if you're running this in labs, you have a protocol for saying, "Well, I'm going to um, this computer might have um, the 1,000 series of participant codes," or you might incorporate conditions in the participant codes. Um, in a later tutorial, I'll show you how you can use the data server to download participant codes automatically, just like I did here. Um, so stay tuned for that.